Do you trust the Lord? You know, I, I want to sing that one part again. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered and I trust him. Because when you're seeking the Lord, God's not trying to run from you. He's been waiting for you to just, you know, when, when we have our little baby grand, grandson at home, that baby just does a peep and we're like, what? We run to the room because we're looking to hear his voice. And that's the way God is with you. He is not running from you. He's not hard of hearing. If you just say Jesus, sometimes all you can say because you're going through so much pain, just say Jesus. And you're saying that because you have so much pain and God could read everything that that word means to you. Jesus, I'm going through a lot of pain. I'm hurting. And God says, okay, I'm going to send you my comfort. I'm going to send you my strength. I'm going to give you a new beginning today. I, it's going to be okay. We're going to get a victory in this thing. That's what God does. Let's sing that one more time. Oh, I saw the Lord and he heard and he answered. I saw the Lord. is good there we go hello 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 let me this will work there we go can you hear me can you guys hear me out there all right is there anybody here for the first time can you just raise your hand real quick i'm not gonna have you do no speeches or anything check, i'm just so glad you're here thank you for coming thank you for coming thank you for coming over there anybody over on the side thank you thanks for coming we're so glad you're here today and and what we do, what we're going to do today is really talk about life in the deepest way we can talk about it through the Bible. Um, God is the author and finisher of life, everything that you see. And if you really want to learn how to live life right, we need to go back to the owner's manual. Yes. And the owner's manual is the Bible. And it's not an outdated book. As we cover things, it starts, we start, as we read it, you're going to start saying, wait a second, that makes total sense. Oh, that's why things work the way they work. And that's why I am the way I am. And that's what I'm struggling with. And whatever problem you have, there's a real answer. We're not offering you a religion. We're offering you wisdom and we're offering you a relationship and we're offering you power to overcome what you're facing. What God does when he enters an atmosphere and there's people that even have a little bit of faith, you don't need a lot of faith. The fact that you're here have some faith, and God doesn't need a little, a lot of faith. Um, the, the faith of a little mustard seed, which is a real small seed, can move mountains with God. And what God is saying, if you just give me a little bit of your effort, a little bit of your focus, a little bit of your faith, and you check into this room, and you check into this moment, I'll move the mountains in your life. I'll cause miracles in your life. I can restore things that you can't fix. There's some, there's some things in your life that you've been struggling with for years and maybe decades. And I got good news for you. In a moment, God could fix you. There's a story in the Bible that was a man sick for 38 years. 38 years sick and he kept getting worse and worse. And one encounter with Jesus Christ, the man was healed. He left there walking, jumping, and completely healthy. That's what Jesus can do. He can take our dysfunction, our addiction, and, and, and our broken relationship, restore them, set you free, and make you new. Let's give the Lord a hand because he's a good God. And so we got some things going on. Uh, I mean, Sunday, we're already sold out for the Barack concert. Uh, we, I mean, it's so, 
soon as those tickets, they put 200 more tickets up, and as soon as they put them up, they were gone within a minute. Uh, so this place is going to be packed out Sunday. If you didn't get your ticket, you missed this one. But we have, the, we have other things going on. Uh, this Sunday, it's going to be, there's only two more weeks to watch the drama crossroads between heaven and hell. If you missed it, we put a whole bunch more tickets up there. Get your ticket, and then show up this Sunday. It's going to be amazing. Just two more productions. Everyone that's come and said, whoa, this is way better than I ever thought. And this is, what, and this is what's happening. People that are coming that aren't saved, they're giving their lives to Jesus. We got people walking in off the streets. They're literally walking in off the streets. And after they see the drama, they're coming forward and giving their lives to Jesus. It, it's, you really don't, you don't want to miss it. And also, you want to visit our new campus. It's something that we built together. I mean, we bought together and we've invested together. This is history time. Be there at the beginning of the grand opening of our Pono campus. We'd love to see you there. Also, this Sunday, we're starting a new series on 40 Days to the Abundant Life. This is going to be a series that we're going to bombard you with what God's blessing, what he has planned for your life. There's going to be seeds that are going to be planted in your heart that are going to produce what we're going to be speaking about. This is going to be a great opportunity to invite your friends and relatives that come out. We have 5,000 cards out there. It says, join us this month, November, for the Abundant Life Series, 9, 11, and 130 in Spanish. Having an abundant, this is a statement. Having an abundant life is not an accident, but it is achieved through the application of godly pr principles that are guaranteed to produce success. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to learn godly principles that are going to produce abundance in your life. We're talking about abundant joy, abundant peace. Come on. Abundant power. You're going to start seeing fullness of life. And we're going to see it affect everyone, every area of our lives. So it's going to be a 40-day commitment right before we go into Christmas. So it's going to be great. Um, the books will be available. We're going to have a 40-day devotional. Every day we're going to be in the Word. Every day your mind's going to be renewed. Every day you're going to learn some principles. By the time you're done with 40 days, you're not going to be the same person. Your thinking's going to change. And guess what? Your results are going to change too. When your thinking changes, your life changes. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time that we have to study your word. And I'm asking, Lord, to talk to us, speak to us, help us to understand it. And Holy Spirit, transform us to be more like Jesus every day. And you know whatever we're dealing with, we know that. You said, fear not, for I am with you. And I just thank you, Lord, that we can trust you, that whatever we're facing, whatever danger, whatever hurt, whatever pain we're experiencing, you understand it, and you're the answer for that. So we just praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to continue talking about what we talked about on Sunday, and we're going to be talking about winning the battle within. Say with me, winning the battle within. Your greatest battles aren't on the outside with people, and circumstances, economy, or even a sickness. Your greatest battles are what's going on inside your soul, inside your mind, inside your emotions. The battle within. Can we win the battle over an addiction? Can we win, win the battle over anger? And we're fits of anger that we find ourselves getting angry and blowing up. Can we win the battle inside of us over depression, anxiety, and fear, and doubt, and rejection, and pain. It wasn't your fault that you were uh, abused. It wasn't your fault that you were rejected and abandoned. But there's a battle within you, and it makes you feel unworthy. And, and if you start believing that you're nothing, and, and, and you don't win that battle within you, this is what's going to happen. You're going to start self-sabotaging yourself, and th your, your lifestyle outside is going to match up with your internal outlook. You guys understand that? Every single one of us are born um, with a nature that really fights against us. Your greatest enemy is not the devil. Your greatest enemy is your sinful human nature. Every one of us, um, we've messed up. Every one of us has failed. And that's why the Bible says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All it means is there's nobody here that's better than anyone else. The idea, we're all in the same boat, but there's a problem. We can't fix ourselves. But there is a God that can fix us and make us whole. And we're going to be talking about our, our nature, our sinful nature. And Sunday we talked about a man named Paul that wrote the majority of the New Testament. And, and he said, he described the battle with, and I'm just going to read it really quick, a few scriptures. 
And maybe you can relate with what he said. And this is what he said in Romans 7, 14. It says, the trouble is with, is with me, for I am too, all too human, a slave to sin. And, and the word sin, all it means is the breaking of God's commands, his instructions, uh, or breaking God's laws. Now, when we talk about laws, we understand no matter what law there is, um, whether it's a speeding law, if you go 55, or there's a carpool law, like carpool lane, you can't drive in a carpool lane with just yourself. You guys understand that, right? And if you do, there's a fine for that. And I found myself driving in a carpool lane um, last year um, by myself. And then the police was right behind me, and I thought he was just admiring my car. I didn't realize that I was breaking the law. And I'll tell you why I didn't realize I was breaking the law. I wasn't in the carpool lane because I, this is why I forgot I don't have my kids and my wife with me. Really, that's really what happened. So he's following me like for miles. Like, what is he doing? Like, why is he keep following me? You know, so I, I just made sure I was, uh, I didn't want to break the speed limit law. So I was right there on the speed. Then he puts his lights on me and he pulls me over. This is my real experience. He pulls me over and he says, do you know why I stopped you? And I know this is a trick. <laughs> because if I say it, he's going to like, see, you know. I go, but this was reality. I did it. I go, I don't know. I go, I wasn't speeding. He goes, no, you weren't speeding. You were in the carpool lane all by yourself. I go, oh, my bad. <laughs> I usually have my kids and my wife with me. It's just a, it's just a, it's just a habit of being in a carpool lane. He goes, okay, um, you're still going to get a ticket. And he gave me a ticket. And this is the reason I broke a law. And when you break a law, there's, there's actually a fine or consequence or a punishment for every law that you break. And of course, the bigger laws that you break, the greater the consequences, the greater the time. And there's, there's people that actually break a law and they get life imprisonment or they go deeper, they actually get the death sentence. And now when it applies to the spiritual realm, it's how funny that when we break laws spiritually, we just want to get a pass and act like we didn't break the law. When, when we break a law, there's going to be consequences. And one of the consequences of breaking God's laws, that means live, break, doing, I mean, living a life of sin, living life wrong, living lustful, living angry, lying, cheating, all the stuff that we do. You're married and you're, you have a, you're committing adultery. You're, you're a, a young person and you're involved in fornication. And all the, you can enjoy all the pleasures of your sin, taking drugs. You could enjoy all the pleasures that you want, but understand, you're breaking the law. And then when you break the law, th there's going to be consequences. And one of the consequences is slavery. What you mean by that is, slavery means bondage or addiction. You're in a situation now that you can't break it. You find yourself saying this, this is the last time I'm doing this because this is really crazy. Like this is, I'm like, this is getting worse. I, I better stop, right? But, and then, but you don't because the next weekend comes around and you do the same exact thing. You still have the fit of anger. You still are getting drunk. You're still getting high. You're still cheating. You're still lying. You're still doing things that you absolutely hate. And you're wondering, how can I get set free from this, this self-destructive behavior? And now it's getting worse because I'm starting to feel depressed about it. It's, it's causing anxiety. It's causing me fears. Uh, uh, like uh, It's getting worse. The consequences of breaking the law are slavery, bondage. And then it goes into extreme eventually unhappiness. And this is where someone finally becomes suicidal. And the spirit of suicide tells you what you need to do is do this. Kill yourself to be set free from you. Get, kill yourself so you can get set free of the misery. You can set, get set free of the destruction. You can get set free of the, of the cycles of, of, of ruin. That means as you continue in sin, this is what's going to happen. You're going to start ruining everything you touch. Your marriage will be ruined. So do you actually think that you're going to be committing adultery and you're married and you have a side girl or a side man or whatever you, a side dish, whatever you want to call it. Dessert. I don't know what you want to call it. 
but I'm going to break this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I'm going to go ahead and commit adultery, and it's not going to ruin my relationship. It's not going to ruin my integrity. It's not going to ru ruin my name. It's not going to ruin my family. It's not going to ruin nothing. You're lying to yourself. You're breaking the law. And the difference between breaking the law on the freeway, going 85 and a 55, the police might not be there. So you could get away with it. But the difference in the spiritual realm, no one gets away with nothing because God sees it all. And these are laws. That means the, the consequences, as soon as we start practicing a lifestyle that's wrong, the consequences eventually, they're, this is what they're doing. They're now, it's like letting the dogs out. Remember that old song, who let the dogs out? Well, the dogs, as soon as we involve ourselves in a lifestyle of sin, the dogs are released. Depression is released. Bondage is released. Uh, loss is released. Ruin is released. Hell's released. And then eventually you're thinking, well, I'm getting away with it. No, the dogs are chasing you, and eventually they're going to catch up with you. This is what it means. Sin has consequences, and there's a day that your consequences catch up with you. You guys understand this? Is this does this make sense to you? Because this is how life works. And... and and it always catches up with you when you least expect it. There was a, I read this week, a pastor that was involved in sexual morality. I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want to dog him. Because he already is all over the news. From a, from a, a spirit-filled church. But now it came up that he was uh, sexually involved with people in his congregation. And he was getting away with it for years, he thought, but the dogs were already out. And eventually, and, and I guarantee he said this, I want to stop. I'll never do it again. I'm, I'm crazy. What am I doing? I'm sure those thoughts would happen after every sexual uh, adventure that he went on. By the time it was done, he would say, I'm sorry. I never want to do it again. But this was a problem. Until you're really sorry and until you call on Jesus, you're still a slave and you'll never be set free. Some of us are sorry we got caught, but you're not really sorry for what you've done. And God knows the difference. All right, I, we're just covering some point one here. Here I go again. I don't really understand myself, this guy, that Paul says. I, I, have you ever been there? Like, I don't, why do I do that? Why do I self destruct Why do I always do that? Why, when I get to this place, I promise myself I would not respond to their craziness with more craziness. And I've ever, I promise I, I won't do it. And you do it again. And you'll never overcome crazy with crazy. Just because everybody's acting wrong around you, it doesn't mean you need to reflect their behavior. I'm going to give you good news. You could be set free of your cycle of crazy, your addiction that you're in, your struggle that you're in, because there's one that can set you free. He can heal your emotions and give you a brand new start, and his name is Jesus Christ. We're not playing. This is real. For I want to do what is right. See, wanting to do what is right is not enough. Unless you have the power to do what's right. I want to do what's right. But can you do what's right? Uh, there was, um, I talked to a politician last week. And it, we're talking about leadership in our city. And they're putting some new leaders in place. And, and I ask them, what's the background of the leader that's coming in place? And he began to tell me this leader that's coming in place, his history. And then he told me, I'm a Christian, and I believe in forgiven 70 times 7. I go, me too. I believe in uh, forgiven 70 times 7, but I, I believe also in his resume. Come on. Come on. But because if, 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 if this leader is failing over and over and over in every city he goes to, I already know the pattern. He's going to fail here too. Say, Pastor, you don't believe in him? No. I know the sinful nature. And unless you break the cycle through the power of the Lord, your past is going to be your present 
but worse. I got good news for you. If you've been in a struggle that your past keeps repeating itself, we serve a God that's greater than your addiction, that's greater than your sinful nature, that's greater than your human nature, that's greater than your generational curses that were passed on by your mama and your daddy. I got good news. You don't have to be like them, even though everybody's an alcoholic. You could be set free today and be the first one that breaks the cycle through faith in Jesus. Give God some praise. We could break the cycles. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, am I saying that that politician can't change? No, I'm not saying he can't change. Because the first question I ask him, I know he has a checkered past, but has he given his life to Jesus yet? And the, and the politician said, no. I go, he ain't changing. <laughs> you understand that? Because... There's only one that can change. You can't change the, take the spots off a leopard. You can't take the stripes off a tiger. But there's a God that can recreate a person. Come on. He can make you brand new. It doesn't matter. Even right now, you might have made a lot of promises to your wife, to your husband. You'll never do it again. But I'm going to tell you this. Unless you give your life to Jesus and become a brand new person, you're going to do it again. But I got good news for you. There's a Savior here. Your wife doesn't have to have faith in you. She has to put her faith in the one that saved you. Your husband doesn't. Come on. Your husband, you don't have to have faith in your wife. If Jesus changes her and makes her a brand new person, praise God. Because he's the change maker. He changes character. He makes us new. Are you still with me? Verse 19 says, I want to do what's good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. Wow. <laughs> Just keep doing it. I don't want to watch no more porn, but I do. I just do it anyway. You got quiet right there, a lot of porn watchers. We get quiet like, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm just telling you that you can't overcome your porn with your own nature. You're going to have to have God come in and intervene and purify you. How many understand that? It's not your discipline. It's not your ability. I'm going to fast 40 days. You're going to come out. If, you're, if you think a fast for 40 days is going to break the power of your porn without depending on the Holy Spirit, by the time you're done, you're just going to be a skinnier porn watcher. The skin here, that's all. <laughs> all I'm saying is nothing wrong with fasting, but you fast to draw close to God. You fast for a move of God, but you don't fast self-discipline, trying to break something within yourself because you can't fix you. But there's one that could fix you and make you a brand new person. Old things pass away. Everything becomes new. Give God some praise. We serve the one that can change us. So the question is, how do I overcome these sinful desires, the sinful nature? And I, I, I believe every single one of us have experienced the cycle. And, and some of us have different cycles that aren't so easy to detect. But you know within yourself, they're screaming loud. You know what they are. You might be going from one self-destructive relationship to another one. and it's this, guy, this one's going to be different. It's not going to be different because you're the same person and you're only going to attract you. And until you're changed, you can't attract something better than you. All right, it's getting quiet right there. We got a lot of, we got a lot of that going on too, I guess. I tell you, I love you, but we're talking about life right here. We're talking about life. This is real life. These are real struggles that we deal with. These real struggles that I deal with. And who's going to set me free from this cycle? Something has to change because no one in my family's changed. Come on. I've been trying to change, but there's only one that can change me. So the answer, the answer is in verse 25. He says, verse 24, what a miserable person I am who will free me from the life that is dominated by sin and death. Who's going to set me free from the cycle of sin and what? death. Sin and what? Sin and what? So we covered this. Sin and death go together like hamburger and fries. Like peanut butter and jelly, right? I don't know what else you guys want to give me. You want to give me one? 
But the idea is sin is, say law, law. It's a law. Sin equals death every time. You cannot sin without experiencing death. Now, death, I already told you, I'm going to review it one more time. It's four things. Four, or five, five things. Number one is a miserable condition. It's misery, extreme unhappiness. Two, it's slavery or addiction. Three, it's ruin, ruin and destruction. You're ruining and destroying everything. Four is eternal misery in hell forever. Five is separation from God's blessings now and for eternity if you don't get saved. So it's total separation from God and his blessing. So Galatians 5.16 gives us an answer. Well, we'll read, matter of fact, let's finish reading them. Verse 25. Who's going who's gonna, to, oh, the person. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Now, who's going to do this? Break this cycle in my life. It seems like it's getting worse. And understand, unless you get set free, your consequences will become bigger and bigger. That means it's, it's almost like, there's mercy on the first times you mess up. And it's like a warning shot. Boom! You got away this time. Next time, boom, boom! The consequences are deeper. The third time, boom, boom, boom! And they're coming quicker now. They're becoming more severe. The depression is getting deeper. The price is getting higher. The ruin is coming faster. You're seeing yourself like, man, and then if you don't watch it, it could lead to complete disaster. Amen. That's how you end up in prison. That's how you end up drunk driving, killing somebody. That's how, how, how these crazy things. We just had a man kill 18 people in Pennsylvania. What? How do you get there? Sin, death misery, pain, slavery, takes over your mind, takes over your emotions. And before you know it, you, see, you're not, it's not like you're, you have a demon. The demon has you now. And he gained, gained access through your permission because every time you go to sin, you're saying, Satan, you're my pastor. You're my leader. Take over. I follow you. I don't follow God. So every time you're sinning, and you're practicing it, you're getting deeper and deeper in the misery, deeper and deeper in the self-destruction, deeper and deeper in the bondage, and deeper and deeper in hell. Man, it's getting sad here. <laughs> Who's going to set me free from this life dominated? So I say dominated. We're living in a world today that's dominated by sin and death. It's just getting worse. More death, more destruction. More pain, more division, more anger, more broken families, more broken marriages, more, more abuse, more, more, more. Why? Because we're being dominated by sin. And this is the, this is the problem. We don't want to change. So this is what we're doing. We're changing the laws to match up with our lifestyle. I don't want to change. Change the law. Make what I'm doing right. So I don't have to look at that law every day and, and not face consequences for my sinful, self-destructive lifestyle. Understand, you could change the laws in the physical, but the spiritual laws never change. That's why it doesn't matter who I talk to. I already know your condition. If you don't have the Lord, I already know where you're at. I know you got a Ferrari, and I know you got millions of dollars in your bank account, and I know you're living large, and I, I, I know, I know, I know, I see you. But I see something that no one else sees. I see the real you. Amen. I remember when um, I, 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 was, uh, I was talking to, we were looking at some property, and somehow the, the, the main broker shows up to the property maybe training the salesperson. I don't know what he was doing there, but, but he owns uh, over a thousand properties throughout the United States, huge properties. I, I don't know how many units, but the properties he owns are like, like, a, a, like 500 unit complexes, stuff like that. So he's telling me everything, all the money, how, how awesome he is, and you know, that's what we do. We like to brag how awesome we are, but I'm not letting that trick me because I'm trying to find out something. 
Are you saved or not? That's what I'm trying to find out. Because I know if he's not saved, I'm going to diagnose him. Not, not because I hate him, because I love him. I'm going to make him look in the mirror and see himself and see his family, see his true condition. So he, told, he tells me, I, he finds out I'm a pastor. He goes, oh, yeah, I give to a church. He says, I give a lot of money to Water of Life. That's what he told me. Church down in Fontana. I go, really? I go, uh, so are you, do you go to that church? He goes, no, I don't go to that church. I go, wow, so you actually give there, but you don't go there? I go, that's interesting. You're real close. But there's a question I'm going to ask you. Are you saved? Are you born again? Do you believe in Jesus? He goes, no, I'm, I'm right now, he, this is exactly what he told me. Um, I'm leaning towards being a Muslim. He's a Muslim. He's not leaning, he is. And he tells me that, and I go, okay. I go, okay. And he, said, he tells me it's the fastest growing religion in the world. So he thought that was going to stump me. I, I go, I go that, don't imp- that, I, that doesn't impress me. I'll tell you why it doesn't impress me. Because the majority of people are wrong. Wow. You know what the Bible, and I told him, now, now we're going into the Bible now. And I told him, and I go, you know, you know what the Bible says? That the way to the hell is wide and many go down that path. And the road to heaven, few find it. So don't get caught up in the numbers. Get caught up in the reality that most people are wrong. So just because they're all voting that way doesn't mean it's right. So he goes, oh, okay, okay. He, he just stopped in his tracks a little bit. And I, and I told him, you know what the problem I have with the Muslim faith? He goes, what? It's, now, pastor, are you dogging other religions? No, this is what I have. See, we got to get past the point that we, well, I, well, is it politically correct? No, is it true? Is it truth? That's all that matters. Is it true? Because if it's not true, it does See, if you're believing a lie, being me trying to be nice to you uh, and not, not, not make you face your truth is not really loving you. Making you face your truth is really loving you. And I guarantee you, because he has so much money and he's had so much power, nobody talked to him about truth his whole life. And I guarantee you this, and I know it, because he was given money but while he was giving money, no one confronted him. And I know because I talked to him. So, I, so I'm, we're getting further now in the conversation. And I go, this is the problem I have with the Muslim faith. He goes, what? No one's saved. <laughs> like none of you are saved. Are you saved? He goes, no. I go, I've talked to Muslim. I, 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 I've talked to everybody. And this is what they say, not, are you saved? Are you born? If you were to die right now, would you go to heaven? And they say, I don't know. And, I, and I'll tell you why they don't know. Because they're trying to get to heaven based on their own works. You can't get to heaven with your sinful nature. Because your sinful nature is corrupt. Your human nature is corrupt. Your human nature is lustful. You're, you're always lusting. You're always desiring with the forbidden. You're addicted to your sin. You can't stop. And you're trying to get to heaven with a human, sinful, demonic nature? That's why none of you know you're saved because you know you're not right. I, he goes, well, we, we, we try. I go, forget about trying. I know I'm saved. Because I didn't save myself. I called on Jesus and he saved me and he forgave me and he gave me a gift of eternal life. It's not something I earned. And when I stand before God, I'm not going to brag about anything I did. I'm going to let everybody know I was a sinner, hopeless, strung out, messed up, angry, upset, and I couldn't change me. But one day I came into a room like this and I heard a message that there is an answer. Thank God for Jesus Christ. They could save me. He could deliver me. And he gave me eternal life. He filled me with his spirit. And now I'm talking to you. So now I'm talking to him. I go, do you know the story about Jesus, what he really did? He goes, no. I go, okay, then you don't even know what we preach. Let me tell you what he did. Me and you are sinners. Do you admit you're a sinner? Do you admit that you break God's laws? He goes, yeah. I go, Good. <laughs> and I told him, do you know when you break a law, there's a consequence? And, and once the sentence has been made, it has to be paid. Once the sentence has been made, it has to be paid. I'm a rapping MC in the place to be. <laughs> rapping about Christianity. What's up? <laughs> All right, let's go. 
Pastor, come on, let's keep it like more, you know, down to earth. Come on, this is real. This is me. I just have fun everywhere. But I'm trying to save somebody today. I'm trying to help somebody overcome their self-destructive behavior. You're thinking, man, I can't change. I was born this way. I know you were born this way. You have a sinful nature. Every one of us has been born with a propensity to sin, and we can't stop it. No matter what your sin is that you identify with, I got good news. When you come to Jesus, old things pass away. Everything becomes new because God fills you with his spirit and gives you new desires, a new ability, and a new nature. Right, you guys got this? Amen. So anyway, so we start talking. So I tell him, you're a sinner, right? That means you've broken God's laws. You understand that's what you've done. You've broken God's commands. And you haven't done it once. Uh, once, you've done it over and over and over and over. And you're doing it every day. You're a serial offender. He goes, yeah, it's true. It's true. I, go, I know it's true because we're all the same. I'm not dogging him. We're all in the same boat. Right? That's why if you're judging someone else, you got to look yourself in the mirror. Yeah. Who are you judging, you filthy sinner? No. <laughs> I don't know what words I want to come up with. That sounds good, though. Because we forget where we came from. And we're really good at covering it up. You look good. You dress good. You smell good. But no amount of perfume is going to fix your sinful nature. No clothes can fix your sinful nature. There's only one that can save you. And if you don't call on him, you're not saved. You're lost. You're addicted. You're miserable. And then happiness is going to get deeper. The addiction is going to get deeper. And at the end, you're going to end up separated from God in hell forever. I don't believe in hell. This is crazy, right? Let's just look at the pattern. Sin causes misery, depression, anxiety, and fear. Isn't that what we're contaminated with? It's worse than COVID. Everybody has it. Come on. Two, it leads to addiction. True or not. There's no, you're not going to be smoking crack without getting addicted. You're not going to be watching porn without getting addicted. Sin leads to addiction. True, true, true that. All right, true that. All right. <laughs> Three, it leads to ruining everything. Aren't, aren't our families falling apart? Aren't, aren't our bodies falling apart? Aren't our marriages falling apart? Aren't we ruining stuff? Three. Three. So I, yeah, I believe those three, but I don't believe the other ones. See how you are? The pattern's right, but the last one, you haven't experienced that, which is misery separated from God in a real hell created for the devil. I don't believe that one. You don't believe that one because you haven't experienced it yet. But look at the pattern. If all those three are true, just follow the pattern. The other one's true too. So don't play Russian roulette with your life. All these things that are going wrong are not meant to go wrong just so you just say, it's just, it's just the way I am. It's for you to know I'm on the wrong track. And I got good news for you. If you've been on the wrong track... You could get on the right track tonight. Man. Okay. Here, I got just through the intro again. I can't believe this. I need like four hours to preach. I just, that's where I'm getting to right now. But, but I'll be preaching Sunday again, so hopefully I get past the intro, but we'll see. But I guarantee you this, you're going to hear some truth because God's word is true. And, it, and I'm telling you, if you go ahead and you believe this truth, it will set you free. Some of you have been trying too hard and you realize, man, I can't do it. I've been trying to change. I've been trying to make a difference. I've been trying to get better. And this is what you're doing. You're trying to self-help root. And what it's doing, you're just covering up stuff. You drop one bad habit and you pick up another bad habit. You're just juggling bad habits. You're just juggling the mess. But I got good news for you. There's a safe 
savior that you can call on that can really help you and deliver you. You come with your addiction. You come with your alcoholism. You come with your depression. You come with your failures. You come with your checkered past because all of us have checkered past and I got good news for you. Jesus will forgive you. He'll cleanse you. He'll clean you up. He'll give you a new life and then what he'll do is show you off. This is what I do with broken people and he'll have you go throughout the world. If he did it for her, if he did it for me, he could do it for you. Come on, someone has, someone needs hope out there in the world. Who's going to set me free? Let, we got to finish it. Man. Thank God. <laughs> the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm telling you, he's the answer. Because when he comes into your life, this is what happens. And I'm going to read one more scripture of this. When he comes into your life, he forgives you of everything you've done. Now, Amen. when Jesus came, he was different than a lot of prophets that came before him. A lot of prophets that came before him were always, this is what they were doing. Turn or burn was like literally, you guys are all going, you guys are headed for destruction. It was that quick. But, but Jesus and, and, and the prophets would bring judgment. A lot of them were called judges. They bring judgment. But Jesus comes, and then the scripture says about him, he did not come to judge. He came to save. He didn't come to judge. He came what? Now, I have to let you know what he's saving you from so you could appreciate your Savior. A lot of people don't want religion, but they didn't know that Jesus was a savior, that he's a life transformer, that he's a source of joy, that he's a source of peace, that he'll set you free from whatever bad habit you have, that he'll give you eternal life, he'll give you a blessed life, he'll give you a rich and satisfying life, he'll give you an abundant life. They didn't know that what they're looking for, they can't find in the club, they can't find in the money, they can't find in the weed, they can't find in the, come on, they can't find in the girls or the guys or whatever you're trying to find your wholeness in, there's only one that has it. There's only one true hope dealer and that's Jesus. Not the dope dealer, it's the hope dealer. Let's start another rap. It's Jesus Christ. Now, this is what he does, he forgives you. Someone say he forgives. That's awesome. And when God forgives, he erases it. Literally, it's off your record. There's books in heaven. There, 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 there's books in heaven that document every single thing you've done. And when, when you stand before God one day in judgment, they're going to be opened up. And you're, gonna, you're not going to be like trying to defend your case. Everything's written. Amen. You're going to see it. And the only thing you're going to be saying, I'm guilty. But it's over at that point because there's no redos. There is no reincarnation. So after I left, uh, let's finish it. But I talked to the guy and, and I told him, Jesus, die for your sins. Pay the price for the crimes you've committed. The wage of sin is death. He died for you. He suffered for you. He was arrested for you. He, 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 was, he, he went to hell for you. He did it all for you because the price has to be paid by another human. So he came as a perfect human, paid the price for all man's sins were put on Jesus. The innocent replaced the guilty. He took all our sins, paid the full price, conquered death, resurrected from the dead. And then he says, here, now. The price is paid so I could forgive you, I could restore you, and I could give you my life, eternal life. Now when you die, you don't die. You just change addresses because you go to a place where there's no death, there's no suffering. Come on, there's no addiction, there's no mass murders, there's no war over there. And then he gives, he fills you. So he forgives you, right? Then he fills you with his spirit. Now that's crazy. Some of you guys are going to leave here possessed by the Lord. What we're going to do is, is evict the demons out of you. Right? Get those demons out of you. And they replace you with a pure spirit of God in you that gives you power over every demon, over every addiction. And it gives you new desires and a new ability to live like Jesus. Powerful. The most powerful life you'll ever live is live like Jesus. You know how powerful Jesus was? This is how powerful he was. He came, he did really ministry, he was here just for 33 years. No one has ever split time in half. 
he was so powerful that next month we're going to celebrate his birth all over the world. He's so powerful that on Easter we're going to be celebrating his resurrection. He's the only person that ever died and conquered death, resurrected. Everybody else, Buddha's in the grave. Come on, Muhammad is in the grave. Harry Krishna's in the grave. Every Hindu God's in the grave. None of them conquered death. They died because they were mere humans. But when Jesus came to earth, he wasn't just a mere human. He was a rep- He was God and he came to earth to die for humanity and he conquered what you can conquer. And then he goes, I'm going to fill you with my spirit. I'm going to fill you with my what? Now, when you have the spirit, and this last verse we're going to read, Galatians 5, 16. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Let the what? Guide your lives. It means regulate, control, direct, lead, correct. Let it it guide your life, adjust your life. Let it do that. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. He says the only way that you're going to overcome your sinful nature is is getting filled with God's spirit and then letting the spirit guide you. Not letting your sinful nature guide you anymore. So I'm not going to let that drama guide me anymore, the anger guide me, the lust guide me. I'm going to start allowing my life to be guided, led corrected, adjusted by the Spirit of God. And then he says, this is how you're going to overcome your cravings. You can overcome it. You know, um, I, I, this week, um, I, my, the Holy Spirit's always sanctifying. You know what that means? He's making you he's every day more pure, more like Jesus. And as a believer, you get frustrated with certain things in your life. You say, man, there has to be, there has to be more. Then the Holy Spirit, you know what he told me? He goes, um, you're not letting me guide you in every area of your life. Wow. I go, what area? He goes, YouTube. Wow. He goes, you watch a lot of YouTube, and I watch UFC stuff. It's crazy. I love it. But they'll have F-bombs, all that stuff. Just ignore it. Let's get to the content. <laughs> right? And God says, how are you going to have a spirit-led life when you're full of fleshly, worldly content. You are what you eat, Marco. Go. Lord. I'm the pastor. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. So I go, so what do I do now? He goes, take the YouTube off your phone. What? So this was crazy. You try to cancel it. Sometimes it's hard to cancel stuff. So I cancel it, and then they say this. This is crazy. There's a page right before you cancel it, and they they say, this is what you're going to be missing. Literally, that's the words. But when I saw a number on there, it freaked me out. Up to this day today, I spent, I'm, I'm confessing my sins one to another. Right? I want to be led by the Spirit. I'm going to overcome the cravings of the flesh if I'm filling myself with fleshly content. Some of you guys right now don't have a flesh problem. You have a content problem. And until you start cleaning your content out, you're going to still be lusting. You're going to still be struggling. You're going to still be empty. You're going to still be depressed. Because junk food, if you eat junk, come on, junk in, junk out. That's all it is. So this is what happened. Junk, junk, right? So it said, this is what you're going to be missing. It said, 1,350 hours of watching. It's not even the years over yet. I spent 1,350 hours on YouTube. I don't know if I had it on while I was asleep or what. (laughs) But that's crazy. So I got rid of it, right? I got rid of it. This is what's happened. I'm getting better sleep. I'm, I, now I'm replacing it with right content. Come on. And, and, and now there's some struggles I'm not struggling with anymore. And I'll tell you why. Because the only way to overcome the cravings of your sinful nature is to be led and guided by the Spirit. But I thank God that the Holy Spirit can correct me. He can tell me. And I can share with you. Because we're all in the same boat. And if I'm struggling, I know sometimes you're struggling. And if we just let the Holy Spirit lie, guide us and lead us, we'll overcome those cravings. Let's give God some praise. We're done.
Praise God. Let's all stand up. No, no one leave yet, though. Don't want to leave. I'm going to leave right now. We're going to leave in a minute. We're going to leave in a minute. Just stand up. Just stand up. We're going to leave in just a minute. Just a minute. But not yet. Dandies is still open. They're open 24-7. Yeah, but in and out. In and out is open to one. You got it. But I tell you this, guys. We're in this together. I, I never want to come across that I'm in a better place. We're all struggling the same struggle as Paul, and I struggle with it too. But I know my answer is that no matter what I'm facing, I could overcome it. And I could overcome it through the power of God's spirit in me. If you're in this room, I know you want a better life. And this is what I do know about human nature. I mean, a human. Every one of us want to be happy. Amen. And this is the truth. Everyone wants to go to heaven. Amen. Like I've never done a funeral and they, all, they never say, they always say this, they're in a better place. And I'm like, how do you know? Because there are two places. And you're not just in a better place because you die. You're in a better place because you got saved. And you, you place your faith in Jesus Christ. Not a religion. I, I, I heard people, and I'm going to say this, but I never say it, but I'm going to say it today. I, I hit the Muslims a little bit. And that guy, after I was, done, I was done, I just finished that story. I talked to him, and he died for your sins. And, and there's only one name to call on to be saved, and it's Jesus. And you know he's the only one that conquered death, and he's alive. No one else ever conquered death. Are you going to serve a, a live God or a dead God? And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one goes to the Father but through me. No one has ever said that. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and life. Do you believe this? And the idea is Jesus claimed to be a Savior and be the only Savior of the world. And the reality is you're a sinner and you have no salvation plan in your religion. And there's going to be a day, unless you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to end up in a hell. But the worst thing about it, you're going to end up with your kids in hell. And what are you going to tell your kids? You bought them the best clothes. You made sure they were in the best sports. You, they had nice cars. You supplied everything and they ended up in hell with you. Because you, were, and I, you have no excuse because I've shared Jesus with you today. He goes, you're right, man. I have nothing. He's just like was shocked. And he wasn't shocked in a bad way. He was shocked like, you made me think. I've never heard about this in my life. I go, this is all I'm going to tell you. Think about it, but today's the day of salvation. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. Give your life to Jesus. Are you ready now? He goes, I'm not ready. I, I, I don't know what it's going to take for you to be ready. You know a good deal in real estate. You don't know a good deal in the spirit. You should, though. I, we're, not, we're not even going to buy the property. I was just here to meet with you. That was just an appointment. <laughs> How many of God get, that, God shocked that guy? He, he, stop sign. And today for some of us, Stop. I love you. I'm your answer. I'm your freedom. I can help you. I can restore you. I can set you free. Jesus said this, the peace that I give you, the world can't give you. He, Jesus said this, I've written these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Wow. Because just follow me. I'll take you to where you want to go. Stop falling for the devil's traps, lies, and bait. Stop being a rat that goes after the cheese every single time. Bap! When are you going to learn? It's a trick. One more time around, really. Today's your day. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus in this simple question. If today were your last day on earth, the wage of sin is death, are you sure that you'd go to heaven? And if you say, Pastor, I think I'd go to heaven, I'd say, why? And you might say something like this, because I think I'm a pretty good person. Understand this. Everybody's a sinner. You could say you're a pretty good person before the judge, but you're not being judged by, by taking out the trash in your house or helping the old lady cross the street, all that stuff, or giving money to the church. That's, not, that's, that's after you're saved, but, but that's not going to save you. You're not going to be saved by your own record. You're going to be saved because you call on Jesus and he forgave you of your sins, washed away your record, and then he gives you a gift of eternal life. Someone say gift. This is your day. Or maybe today you're saying, man, I'm struggling with an addiction or a cycle that I've been in, a cycle of sin, of the self-destructive. There's things I'm doing I hate and I don't want to do anymore. You know what that, what that is? Freedom. You want freedom. 
And Jesus says this, who the son sets free is free indeed. It's a wage of sin. It's, it's, it's bondage. You can be set free today. Amen. I've seen it happen over and over. Amen. They get set free. Number three, you were saying, you know, say, Pastor, I feel like I'm in a cycle of everything just gets destroyed. It starts off good, but it just ends in ruin. I, it's, I just always, I'm so scared now to be rejected and hurt. I put walls up and I, I almost like try to defend myself so much because I'm scared it's going to happen again. So now you got walls up and you got anger up and you're trying to make sure it doesn't happen again. But these walls are trying, the, the problem is keeping maybe the bad out, but it's also keeping the good out. All these walls. You're not able to endure relationships. You got too many walls up. And God says, let's tear those walls down and let me break that cycle of self-destruction. So I'm going to count to three. It's going to be a choice. You're going to raise your hand, give your life to Jesus. And when you're, when you're sick, you could care less. Or when you want help, you could care less what people think. Don't get more concerned with what people think than just getting right. And the other thing, don't listen to the voice that, that your sinful nature says, not now, later. Imagine you end up in hell and that demon tells you, not now, later. You kept following me. You kept serving me. Not now, later. Now there is no later. One, I want you to raise your hand if you want to give your life to you. I want to give my life. I want eternal life. I want forgiveness. I need a new beginning today. Two, and when I say three, I want you to raise your hands. Say, I want to be saved. This is your moment. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. This is your moment. You can leave here and check out and die. It happens all the time. My cousin last week, driving a car 20 feet, goes in a ditch. They look at him. His heart stopped out of nowhere. One, give your life to Jesus. I need freedom. I need a new beginning. I need the Holy Spirit in my life to help me. I can't do it on my own. I'm tired of doing it on my own. Two, three. Raise your hands all over this building saying, that's me. I see the hand. Proud of you. Anybody else over here? I can't see over here. I see the hand over there. I see the hand over there. I see that. Proud of you, baby. I see that hand there. Anybody else? This is your new beginning. I see the hand there. I see the hand way in the back. I see what we're going to do. I see the hand way in the back. Proud of you. This is what we're going to do. How we connect with God is through prayer. And I'm so proud of you. Raise your hand. I'm going to tell you this. We love you. God loves you. And it's time to turn the losses and the wins today. For you and your whole family. We're more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. Today's your day. I want those that raise their hand, do one more thing for me. Will you come forward real quick? And all I want to do is pray with you. Come up here and I want to pray with you. Will you give the honor and pray, pray, pray with you? Just come up here. If you raise your hand, come up here. We're just going to pray with you and then we're going to release you. But let's give them a hand. Come on, they're coming forward. If you raise your hand, ask your neighbor. You want to go up there, I'll go up there with you. Ask your neighbor. You want to go up there, I'll go up there with you. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, to someone's brother, someone's sister, someone's friend, someone's mama, someone's daddy, someone's uncle. Online, give your life to Jesus. Raise your hand, just stand up where you're at. If you're in a car, pull the car over. Let's say a prayer together. Ask your neighbor, you want to go up there or go up there with you? There's somebody here that right now, it's your moment. It's your day. The truth is, if you leave here without Jesus, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Give your life to Jesus. Today's your day. We love you. You come with your lifestyle. You come with your pain. You come with your hurt. You just have to be saying this, I'm done with it. I'm tired of it. It has to change tonight. I'm tired of the alcoholism. I'm tired of the porn. I'm tired. I'm just tired of the anger. I'm tired of the self-destruction. I'm tired of the emptiness in my soul. I'm tired of the, I'm tired of the torment. I'm tired of the sleepless nights. I'm tired of the destroyed relationships. I'm done. Come on. It takes a real man and woman to do this. We're going to pray. Okay. This is what you're saying. You got to be done with your sin. Like, I'm done with it. He'll give you the power to overcome it. Because understand, we come here a lot of times, we're come, we come addicted. And, and you say, I can't stop. And I know you can't stop, but he can help you stop. That's the power that resurrected Jesus from the dead. going to invade your heart and help you. And then you're going to go home and you're going to throw stuff away that represents your lifestyle. You're going to throw it away. I'm done with that. It's like breaking up with somebody and just give them back the ring. We're done. I'm not keeping the ring. We're done. I don't want nothing to do. We're broken up. That's how you have to be with the devil and your sin. The reason some people don't conquer, there's a reason. They're not done yet. And I'm not telling you you can do it. I'm telling you he can do it. But he needs a real yes from you. Okay? 
We love you. God loves you. I'm proud of every one of you here. Okay? I'm glad you're here. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. This part, we're gonna join, we're gonna join God's family. I'm glad you're here. We're all family, all right? And we ain't going nowhere. We're gonna be here till Jesus comes back. We're not for sale either. We're here. You know, that means it don't matter what someone offers me. I'm here in San Bernardino to the day I die. So you're going you're gonna to have one thing stable. The way we're allowed is going to be stable in your life. All of that stuff might not be stable. This is going to be stable. Let's pray. Give us a year of your life. Give your life to just go through the classes that we have for you. It's learning. Someone say learning. So you're starting. This is your decision. I'm going to follow Jesus now. You know what that means? You're going to be a disciple. You know what a disciple means? A student. You're going to be mentored by Jesus and his word. This is what's going to happen. Your life, your thinking is going to change. Your life's going to change forever. You're going to be a different person, empowered, and also you have a renewed mind. It's going to be powerful. We're going to coach you through this because we love you, okay? Let's pray. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Say this with me. Say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. And the price for sin, the consequence for sin is death. But I believe that you loved me so much that you suffered for my sins. You died for my sins. You were buried for my sins. And then you rose again to give me forgiveness and eternal life. Today, I ask you to forgive me and set me free. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit and power to overcome my sinful nature, addictions, the past, the hurt. Thank you, Jesus, for your spirit. I am saved. I have eternal life. And I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give them a hand. We're going to pray with you. Get some information. Sign you up for the Holy Words class coming up. God bless you, church. See you Sunday. Get some, get some of the tickets. We have 5,000 tickets. Invite your friends and family to come to church Sunday. I'll be speaking this Sunday. It's going to be awesome. We got people even coming. We got speakers in this series. We got a speaker coming all the way from back east, Detroit. Coming in. He's going to be here too. It's going to be awesome. We love you. Remember this. If God's for you. There's no one could come against you. You want prayer? Come on up.